Is he trying to call me Finn? No, he's raided. He's raided his ex girlfriend's boyfriend. Right. Yes. That's part of the general order. We have solved all the problems. If you want to sit down and talk to us about how to do it. Well, I seem, uh, your your conversation seemed much more interesting than anything I had to say. Oh, really? <laughs> Nick, you want to know what we just said? What I happened to Long Fence today would never happen to a Baltimore Police Department employee. Long Fence just got fired. Mm. Say that again. What happened to Long Fence would never happen to a Baltimore Police Department employee. How did that, how you <laughs> how you get from Long Fence to a police See, employee? Well, that's what you We're talking about long. government models. You leave right. us in here too long, we talk too much. But how did that... <laughs> Get to somebody's boyfriend. Oh, oh no, so we, no. Were talking about particular we were talking case. about a police right. officer and right. an investigator. Particular case. Yeah. We we're talking about accountability. Accountability. That's right. Exactly right. You just held long fence accountable. Yeah. They got fired. Right. I would say it softer than that. You're much more, <laughs> much more direct. Okay. It's like this. <laughs> we prefer not to use your services. <laughs> That's nicer, isn't it? Yes. yes. That's me. Okay. You should come to our next meeting to have you I've never been invited to the first you know one what? or the last one. Let's invite you. You have an open invitation. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and, and if, yeah, the, if the cameras weren't rolling, I would say... No, that, no, 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 no. Everything will stay in the room. No, I was saying right. if the right. cameras weren't rolling now, I would say that I, it is rare that you'll find someone say that I've turned down an invitation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously. Right. Where do y'all drink? All right. Where do y'all drink? You can bring Kevin. Different places. Different places. Yeah. He's still on probation. I don't know if he can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's still new. Any All place right. interesting? Yes, actually, we have another thing to ask you about. Oh, I was talking about any can interesting you talk a places. Bit about the demolition and um, the use of the mortgage settlement money, ten million. Um, the plans to demolish around six hundred vacant homes in the city. Um, and, and why that money is being used that way and not to help homeowners who are struggling because foreclosures are going up. Got it. So I can't sp uh, speak specifically to the amount, uh, but I can speak sort of thematically around the use of the funds. We were very diligent uh, to make sure that uh, with the settlement funds uh, that, that all of the, the areas that are allowable are cover covered. A uh, significant amount of funds are going to direct services and support for homeowners. That's done, but the settlement also uh, in the in the settlement also takes into account neighborhood stabilization. And uh, part of that neighborhood stabilization in Baltimore and everywhere else where there's a settlement is allowable demolition. So that is a part of it as well. And I think you said something over the next ten years. How many homes do you expect to be demolished in the city? Uh, our goal is, uh, well, I can say this, with the Clinton Global Initiative, we've committed to 3,000 um, demolished and uh, or totally rehabbed. But my real goal is more. I mean, w what we do, we do it in strategic ways, so it spurs more development. And you've seen, you, if, if you take a look at what we're doing with our strategic um, demolition through vacancy to value and our strategic enforcement, what you're seeing is it's not just the investment that the city is making that's making a difference, it's the, uh, the ripple effect with other uh, investors that are coming. So my goal is to, for it to have a much larger impact. Is there a price tag attached to it over 10 years? I'm sure. So I do know that when I unveiled my very captivating 10-year plan that I'm sure you've read several times, it was all laid out. The whole mm -hmm. demolition strategy and all the money was laid out in there. So that would be a good reference point. Okay. Mayor, um, I've been asked to ask about the Reginald F. Lewis mm -hmm. Museum. Um, it's fallen on hard financial times. The attendance is way down, and it can't. It's not making the payments it's supposed to make to the state government. So taxpayers have having to pick up more of the bill. And um, I guess I'm wondering. Obviously, this is a, it's a state initiative, but um, what can the city do anything here? And are you concerned about this museum and whether it'll stay open or can make its payments? So first, any time I hear of a, a, uh, an asset that we have, a valuable asset in the city, um, you know, having hard times, it concerns me. Particularly when you talk about the Reginald F. Lewis Museum, it is a beautiful piece of architecture, a tribute to uh, the man and what he represents, not just in Maryland, but in the, in the country. So it, it does concern me. 
Um, you know, we've had some conversations, but I think it's premature to say, you know, what happens after this as far as uh, any city involvement. The uh, police commissioner would like to um, get his police officers to pay this. Have you had conversations with him about this? You know, I, I can say that one of the things, and I think I spoke about this uh, after the firefighters contract, one of the things that uh, gave me hope after that contract, we were able to get, um, you know, a, a decent raise for the firefighters um, and uh, do that because of a compromise. I know that, um, you know, our first responders, when they think about, um, you know, work conditions and when they think about contracts, they compare. So it gave me hope that we would be able to do the same thing. You know, I think um, the the um, union officials, the officers themselves, the commissioner and me, we're all on the same page. We understand that in order for us to be competitive, just like we did with the landmark teachers contract, we have to have competitive salaries. So it's just how do we get there in a, in a fiscally responsible way. Would you be willing to, I know the union president has really talked about, don't keep having police officers, pay you the ones you have more. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to go down that road as, as opposed to continuing to expand what I, what I will say is, um, just like I was with the, I mean, the reason why we were able to be successful with the fire contract is because I remained open to negotiation and uh, didn't take anything off the table except for a, a concrete idea of what the, sa the long-term savings would be to the city. So with that as the overarching uh, concern, uh, you know, the, the price tag, and uh, with the police department, it's a second, you know, a, a second tier is the, our, our ability to continue to provide the uh, public safety uh, throughout the city. So with those two things as the, the big, um, you know, I guess, you know, directions as far as, or the big priorities, um, everything else is on the table to me. Do you think the, do you think the police department should be smaller? Yeah, I think there's been a lot of discussion about that, and um, up to this point, it's it has been, um, you know, sort of theoretical you know, in these scholarly exercises, as, you know, or media speculation. Uh, I think the the um, the police commissioner, uh, I think, did the right thing, engaging uh, the uh, company that's doing uh, the analysis of the department. Part of the analysis is uh, taking a look at the sectors. As I mentioned before, um, they haven't been redrawn, you know, probably older than I am. Uh, and we certainly know that crime trend, trends have changed, populations have shifted. We have to be responsive to that. And in doing so, you have to take a look at the, uh, the model for um, you know, the, the amount of officers we need. And again, to me, everything is, is on the table, but it should be informed, not speculative. Recently, at several meetings, Governor O'Malley has, has uh, I guess, floated the idea that arrests need to go up in Baltimore. Um, is that something you agree with? I would say um, I believe in targeted arrests, and I also know, uh, talking to community leaders, um, that their concern when we start talking about, um, you know, there should be more arrests, that that means kids that shouldn't have arrest records are caught up in the net. That concerns them. You know, I spent a significant amount of time uh, before I hired uh, Commissioner Batts. I wanted to hear from community leaders throughout the city. And the, the, the theme I kept hearing is we want to be partners. We want to be partners. You know, all, every uh, kid in a poor neighborhood is not a criminal. And you have to, in, in my mind, uh, in order uh, to provide not just the reality in the sense that the, the arrests are down, but the perception is to make sure that we continue to talk about this partnership that we have to foster. So I'm sensitive to saying, you know, I, I'm not going to say we should have, you know, some arbitrary number of uh, additional arrests when I know if it's not targeted, if we're not focused on that small group of people who uh, are doing harm in our communities, um, in some cases, we can do more damage than good. Oh, I'd like to ask about the Grand Prix. Why not? Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, um, uh, the reason I was given was scheduling conflict, mm -hmm. but um, weren't, weren't finances also a concern? I mean, if the Grand Prix was, was going gangbusters and making tons of money, wouldn't, wouldn't the city or, and 
the Ravens and everyone figured out a way to, to get that thing on the schedule? I mean, the NFL is doing gangbusters, and we couldn't get the, the home, you know, the, the home opener here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I would like to say that, you know, money is no object. And we could pay off the, I mean, I shouldn't say pay off, but compensate the, um, the conventions that have, have booked business so we could clear dates. We just, we don't have, you know, that's just not possible. And as I said, it would be different if it was a uh, unilateral decision that I could say, okay, let's just make it um, this uh, date and deal with it. But you see what happens in states like New York or cities like New York when, the, when Governor Cuomo did that, you know, made unilateral decisions and lots of other convention businesses are paying for that because he decided, you know, unilaterally it will be used, you know, the Java Center will be used on this date for this purpose. You know, I, I just think you have to, you have to weigh all of, uh, all of those things, you know, what business is there, how it will impact the hotels, the convention center, and you have to have buy-in between, you know, the existing uh, sports entities. And in order for all of those parts to fit together, you know, and it, there are moving parts. Um, it was very complex, very complex, and we just couldn't get there. And you, it's not like you could do it with three parts. You need all of, you know, all of the parts to work together. Mr. Grant said he lost money. Did that factor in all the decisions to not hold it? Because he lost money two, two years in a row. I know that um, when we when we initially talked about it, he anticipated the uh, the longevity. Like this is not something. There, there are very few events like this that are money makers in the, the first few years. Um, that it is, um, you know, you, you establish the race and then, um, just like in Long Beach, you know, it's been there for over 40 years and the same thing, you know, it, the first few years you have to establish that market and then you can, you can grow it. Um, the problem is, you know, he was, it was growing. There was more sponsorship interest even more after the race was completed, there was more uh, uh, sponsorship uh, interest. And, you know, for racers to, to, you know, when I was greeting the racers before the race and, and unsolicited, you know, they were like, this is a good track. You know, I hope this stays. I mean, there was interest in, in the race, in the racers themselves, the interest was there. So if it was just that, um, and not the fact that you know just no other um, dates work for all the entities. You know we wouldn't be having these conversations. Did he do Mr. Well, Lord, did Mr. Grant um, approach city government about a uh, um, giving giving some more help on uh, on the race to cover some of the losses? I think I mean there certainly was uh, there were conversations um, about what the what the city's involvement could be in the race. Oh, Can we ask a question about the rain pads? Last one. Okay. So this morning there was an op-ed piece by David Craig, who's mm -hmm. obviously running for governor and thinking about running for governor, Republican ticket. But I he thought he announced. He announced. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he points out his. He said he had his county. Did you read it? You not yet. Okay. I so, do. I do know about the issue. Okay. I did not read his specific words. Okay. So he says he has his. He had his folks in the county figure out that for the size of a General Motors car dealership, mm -hmm. that it would cost $269 in Hartford County and $12,000 in the city of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned that this is going to be a complete, I mean, are you concerned about the impact of, if that's true and the city's amount is way higher than everybody else's, does that concern you? So a couple of things, you know, if it's true, is a big uh, question, and you know all of the all of those concerns. We heard we heard and listened very carefully uh, to the impacted industries in the city uh, when uh, we worked through the council to get uh, the rain tax, the state mandated rain uh, tax, enacted for Baltimore City, and we put a lot of uh, thought into what can be done to um, remediate. So if there is, you know, this need to do it, um, you know, per your land area, what can you do uh, as a land owner to, to mitigate, you know, those, those costs? So we did a lot of work to try to give people options as well as affordable options to, uh, to reduce the amount of the tax. You know, I, I think um, 
there's probably, you know, a little gamesmanship and political work that's been going on. He's taken a page out of Governor Perry's book, um, you know, trying to, you know, court uh, business out of um, Maryland to, to Texas. Maybe he figures if it was good for Perry, it'll be good for Hartford County. Um, but I just, you know, that being said, we had a very responsible and inclusive process and um, we'll continue to work. I mean, it's clear that the, this is not a, a dead issue in the legislature. So, you know, in as much as the work on the rain tax continues, we'll continue uh, to work collaboratively to make sure it, doesn't, it, it does not negatively impact Baltimore business. So you're, you're not on Perry's guest list today? Hmm? You're not on Perry's guest list today? So you're open to changes, and if, if there are anomalous or situations like that that seem to be out of whack, you're, you're open to changes in the actual. What, what I what I know is before any of that comes up, the state will probably the legislature will probably take it up again, and you know I I think we have to be, have an open mind as to what is what is possible, you know we, I mean we do have you know uh, an aging infrastructure and a need to uh, make sure that we can um, meet the requirements of the EPA. And I am, you know, while I'm doing that work you know, with, the, with the, the council and impacted industries um, and the, the legislature, I'm also working through the Conference of Mayors to see how cities in Baltimore's position, because we're not alone in this. You know, there are cities across the country that are having significant financial um, difficulties because of uh, their uh, aging infrastructure and trying to meet the, the mandates um, placed by the, the federal government. So this is an issue that, you know, it's, it, it's hot now in, in, in Baltimore and because of this contentious uh, rain tax issue, but this is a national issue. Um, many, many jurisdictions. You know, when you, have to, when you sit in a room with mayors and, and they talk about uh, jurisdictions in their states that are contemplating giving up their incorporation because they can't afford to uh, maintain their infrastructure is real. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me know if you guys need anything. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks.